In problem number 42 of section 2.10, we're given the equation of an ellipse, uh, x squared over 25 plus y squared over 100 equals 1. And we're asked to find first the rate of change of y with respect to x and the, um, also the second derivative of y with respect uh, to x in terms of x and y. So we'll start out by implicitly differentiating this function, which if we take the derivative with respect to x on both sides, uh, we get 2x over 25 uh, plus 2y over 100. But now we're assuming that y is a function of x, so we need to multiply by dy dx uh, by the chain rule. And on the right-hand side, we'll have 0. This implies that uh, 2y over 100 dy dx is equal to minus 2x over 25. And if we multiply by, uh, this reduces to y over 50. Now if we multiply by 50 over y on both sides, See that dy dx is equal to uh, the 25 and the 50 cancel out, and we're left with 2 there. So minus 4x over y for dy dx. And to find the uh, second derivative, so second derivative of y with respect to x, uh, we can use the quotient rule. So we'll first want to take the derivative of the numerator, which is uh, minus 4, times the denominator, which is y, and subtract the uh, derivative of the denominator, which is dy dx, times the numerator, which is minus 4x. And all of that over the denominator squared, which is y squared. Now this is equal to minus 4y minus uh, dy dx. We know that dy dx is minus uh, 4x over y, so we'll just substitute that. And that will give us positive 4x over y times negative 4x. This goes back to negative all over y squared. And we'll simplify this, and the y's cancel out in the first term, so that leaves us with 4 over y. And the second term will have negative 16x squared over y cubed. And that will be the second derivative of y with respect to x. Now in Part B, we first want to verify that the point uh, x equals 3, y equals 8 is actually on the ellipse. So we'll just substitute that into the equation for the ellipse. And we see that 9, uh, or 3 squared, 9 over 25, plus y squared over 100, which is 64 over 100. Let's just calculate this and see if it's actually equal to 1. So if we take 100 to be our common denominator, then we have 36 plus 64, which is 100 over 100, and that is indeed 1. So the point 3a is actually on the ellipse. And now we want to find an equation for the tangent line at 3a. So we know that an equation for the tangent line will be uh, y equals um, well, the point y not, uh, which in this case is 8, uh, plus the derivative of y with respect to x, um, evaluated at the point 3, 8. So I'll say, and multiplied by um, x uh, minus x not, which is 3. 
This will be equal to 8 plus, now dy dx is negative 4x over y. So this will be negative 4 times 3 over 8 times x minus 3. And this simplifies to, uh, let's see, negative 3 over 2. x minus 3. So we say that this is the equation of the tangent line at the point 3, 8. Now in part c, we're asked to find an, or find an expression for the function that uh, gives the x-intercept of a tangent line, or of a line tangent to the upper half ellipse. So our first step is just to find a general equation for the tangent line. And we know that uh, dy dx is equal to negative 4x over y. So we know that general equation for the tangent line will be y is equal to um, y naught plus dy dx. Uh, evaluated at x naught y naught, so it's going to be minus 4x naught over y naught uh, times x minus uh, x naught. So in order to find the um, x intercept, we want to set uh, y equal to 0. So set Actually, going back even further, we want to write this all in terms of x0, which is the point um, corresponding uh, to the point um, x0, y0 on the ellipse. So if we rewrite, uh, say, uh, let's first rewrite y0 in terms of x0. So we know that um, x0 and y0 satisfy the equation, this following equation here. So we see that uh, y naught squared is equal to, uh, well, first let's uh, multiply by 25, or uh, excuse me, subtract um, x squared, or x naught squared over 25 on both sides. And then multiply by 100. See that y naught will be plus or minus the square root of 100 minus 4 x naught squared. And since we're only considering points on the upper half ellipse, we can safely assume that, uh, that we're taking the positive square root. So now we can rewrite the equation for the tangent line just in terms of x. So this means that y is equal to well, y naught, which is 100 minus 4x naught squared, and the square root of that, minus 4x naught over the square root of 100 minus 4x naught squared. Times x minus x naught. And now we want to set this equal to 0 and um, find out exactly what the x-intercept is. So if we set um, so, right. if we set y equal to 0, um, then, well, we want to so then we'll solve this entire equation uh, for x. So we'll have y equals 0. Um, now if we move this term to the left-hand side, that will leave us with 4x0 over the square root of 100 minus 4x0 squared uh, times x minus x0 
is equal to the square root of 100 minus 4 x naught squared. Uh, probably the easiest thing to do at this point is just multiply by uh, the square root of 100 over, or 100 minus 4x squared on both sides. So I'll cancel it out on the left hand side, leaving us with 4 x naught times x minus 4x uh, naught squared. And on the right side, that will leave us with uh, 100 negative 4x naught squared. So finally, we can solve this for x. We see that uh, for x naught x uh, is equal to 100 minus 4 x naught squared. Uh, let's see, 100 minus 4 x naught squared plus 4 uh, x naught squared is just 100. And that means that we can then solve this for x, and we get that x is equal to 100 over 4 x naught. So in terms of the function that will uh, take an x-coordinate and give out the x-intercept uh, of the tangent line corresponding to that, uh, to the point um, x, x naught, y naught, on the ellipse, uh, we would write this i of x is equal to 100 over, well, write this 25 over x naught. Now, uh, part D asks us to repeat this uh, same problem for the lower half ellipse. So if we let, say, q of x be the function that uh, takes, you know, takes a point uh, or takes a uh, point on the x-axis and looks at, we look at the tangent line on the lower half ellipse corresponding to that point and try to find the x-intercept there, that would be the output of q. So if we look back here, we see that the process is really exactly the same. The only difference is when we solve for y, we would be solving Right, so when we solve for y naught here, we'd be looking at minus um, the square root. But then if we went back here, everything would just cancel out because so we'd be multiplying by minus here and a minus here, our signs would cancel out. And if you work through the whole thing, you can see that the formula would be exactly the same. In other words, q of x is also equal to 25 over x naught.